and then you just turn your attention away from it and you're just right back into your moment within go within there's a passage in the scripture that talks about Jesus going into the temple and he just walks through the midst of the people and this is a beautiful mystic revelation of how you can be in the midst of people that hate you and none of their hatred and their energy can bother you when you're here when you're in the temple when you go within to your true nature None of it can bother you and move you. Their stones cannot hurt you. Because you are not the one that was born. You are not the one that can die. They cannot hurt you. They cannot bother you. They cannot get you. And a matter of fact, not only can they not do that, but now that doesn't even bother you anymore. To the degree that you'll go right into Jerusalem knowing that they're all there waiting to kill you. Go into the temple and you pass through their midst. This is just a exoteric way of an esoteric way of talking about you practicing being within and experiencing the bliss that is within uh, the high, high life so that the things around you are not quite as noticeable and all of a sudden you'll find that those pet peeves and those little things that used to bother you kind of melt away but your mind is so immersed in the glory that's within that it's not this is such an afterthought now. Whereas when you're living an outside existence, everything's perceptional, then you need to notice it all. But when you're living an inward existence and everything is beyond the subjective and objective, everything is here in, the, in an inner reality, then all of a sudden that you don't need to notice Fred and his boogers or you care that Fred was banging Johnny. You just don't care anymore. Sally's got a nice booty. She walks by you like, huh, oh, it's a nice booty. And then you're right back into the inner place. Appreciating the form and right back into the inner place. I'm, so, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this is a, a small secret, and it does take a little bit of mental practice, a little from a mindfulness perspective, a little mindfulness practice of every time you find yourself annoyed realize you're living an outward existence and I want you to hear these words the next time you feel annoyed or feel frustrated or you feel I want you to hear these words go into the temple hear these words go into the temple and then take a breath close your eyes take a breath and then just go here even if you put your hand here go within to the place that is perfect. Hey, Kevin, here, nobody can say a word that bothers you. Here is perfect. Ah, 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 they said that Silas is a baby rapist. Ah, 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 yeah, this moment's perfect. I want to kill you. Oh, this moment's so perfect. Ah, ah, so, so easy, so good. Ah, and then you walk through the midst. And it's in this place that you can realize that you have an effortless love for them that are trying to kill you. But if you are living an outward existence, you can try as hard as you can and not have a love for those that are trying to kill you. Jesus says, love your enemies, and everybody puts it to work trying to love their enemies, but you can't. Because the one that's trying is incapable. A little secret. Now I'm going to say this and it's going to not make any sense in accordance to what I normally talk about. But the more time you spend in the temple, the faster all the things you believe about yourself dissolve. And the reason why I say it makes no sense is because I'm saying that to you. But I also want you to realize that you have always been in the temple. And the temple is what you are. And that you have the fullness already. There's nothing that you can gain or get 
But as long as there is a believed self, and you're going to give energy to something, give energy to the being in, in the temple, to the inner life. This is so good here. <sighs> it's so good here. 